Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to see how we can turn a Blazor application into a desktop application using Electron. Electron is an open source framework used to create desktop applications for Windows, Mac or Linux using web technologies. In order to achieve such a task, it uses Chromium and Node.js packaged within the application. This does mean that we end up with huge executables, but the advantage is that we only have to write our code once and we just build for each target environment and our code will essentially just run in the exact same ways in all those environments without having to write the application for each environment's native code. You can imagine it as having a shell written for each platform in C++ and Objective-C and then having some sort of browser running internally. Examples of applications that use Electron are Atom, Visual Studio Code, and Slack, just to name a few. Now you might be thinking that Electron would be a great thing for WebAssembly Blazor, and I do agree, it would be awesome. However, I am more interested in the possibilities of a self-contained server-side Blazor application running as a server application using Electron. Like I have said in the past when I compared client-side with server-side, I see server-side Blazor as more of a technology that would be great in a smaller environment in a smaller scale, even as an internal application in our companies. I have personally used server-side Blazor and Electron to create a desktop client that can be used to browse and analyze Azure Cosmos DB. It essentially functions similarly to something like SQL Server Management Studio and was really easy to build because I'm just using c -sharp running in a .NET Core 3 application to write all the data access code. Such a thing wouldn't be so easy with WebAssembly Blazor. This video is part of my Blazor series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, make sure you subscribe and hit the sub notification bell. So here I'm just going to use the application we've been working on uh, throughout this series to uh, show you how we can turn this web application into a desktop application. And the first thing I need to do is I'm going to use Electron.net. And Electron.net is an awesome package created by the community. And I'm going to leave a, a link description down below just so you can go and leave a like. It's an awesome project. Please support it. Um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to go to the uh, NuGet package references. And here I will say Electron.net and there Electron net, sorry. And there are two uh, packages here, uh, the API and the CLI. We are going to use both, but we're only going to install the API as a package. So I'm going to do that, uh, installing the package. Now this is here. Uh, the next thing I need to do is I need to go to the startup.cs. And down here in the configure method, I will need to add essentially just a line of code. I'm going to say task.run async. And then await electron dot window manager dot create window async. And there's quite a lot of customization that you can do here in the window, such things like the title and stuff like that. I'm not going to touch too much on that. You can, again, click the link in the description to see how you can customize um, the application with electron.net. I want to focus on the idea. So with that out of the way, we also need to go to the program.cs. And in the create host builder method, I'm going to go above the startup and I'm going to say web builder dot use electron and then pass the argument uh, as a parameter. And essentially, that's all I need to do from a code perspective. This will now turn my application uh, from a web application to a desktop application. And I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do this. I'm going to go to terminal and in here, I'm going to use uh, the electronized CLI to do some initialization and essentially also run my application. So the first thing you need to do, if you haven't done this already in your spare time, is you need to install uh, the global uh, tool, which is the CLI. So uh, we do a .NET tool install global, and this will install it and make it accessible from anywhere in our uh, machine and say electron dot, electronet.cli. It's going to say that I have already in installed it, and that's because I have actually used this before in my machine. But for you, this will install the latest version. Uh, and now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to say electronize in it. And this will initialize something in my launch settings. And we can actually have a quick look here. It's going to add this electron.net profile. So the way it's going to make it runnable is it's going to say electronize start in the current working directory. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. I'm going to say electronize start. And this will trigger a sequence of events internally in that CLI that will actually publish the project, do all the NPM magic, 
and then package it up and run it. And as you can see, the application is now running in this port. And as you can see now, it is alive. We have the exact same site that we had on the browser, but running as a desktop application. Now, if you choose a different target environment, you can run the exact same thing on a Mac or on a Linux. And you can see that it's fully functional. I can still do all those things. I can still go here and say Nick test dot com and login and it works in the exact same way have the exact same functionality now this is great but what i want to do now is i want to create an exe out of it or even an installer for that uh, to make it fully uh, independent uh, what i'm going to do now then is i'm going to say electronize build and then for slash target win you have to specify the the way you actually want to build it against because it needs to generate that a native code to essentially create a shell for our application. So now what this is going to do is it's going to create uh, this executable and properly publish it. And then you can give it to other people and use it without having to install .NET Core in their system, uh, without having to install Node or without having to install a Chromium. So it's all packaged into a single, essentially, executable. It's not really a single executable, but it's a standalone application that you can just give to other people and share so with that now finished i can go in my uh, bin folder and i have this desktop folder now here this is where it's actually building it and i have two things i have a, an installer and this will if i run this this will uh, set up my application uh, on the machine as a, just any other uh, application that's being installed on windows but if i go in the unpacked i can actually see what's going on here and as you can see our server blazor.exe this is what our application is uh, it's a 95 megabyte uh, executable. Now, you might say that's too much, but you can actually trim it down and make it smaller. Uh, however, you have to be very careful because when you essentially shake the tree of the application, if you're using reflection, some of the things might be trimmed off uh, accidentally. So you might have to exclude some paths. Uh, and you can see that actually our whole application is in the resources folder. And this is where .NET Core is also uh, and the self-contained part is also here. So if I go in the uh, exe and I just run it, I can just give this whole folder to somebody and they can just run the exact same application, but in their machine. And as you can see, it runs. It is, however, huge. And um, Steve Sanderson, the original creator of Blazor, has actually started working on a different project, which we're going to see in the next video to make this whole thing smaller. That's all I want to show you for this video, very small, very quick, just to show you that this is an option that you can uh, have and use and potentially come up with ideas to create desktop applications using Blazor, especially server-side. I find it very exciting that we can do this. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notifications. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.